Today we're talking about your enlarger station, what you'll find there, how the enlarger works, and the different parts of the enlarger. Let's start by saying that each enlarger in our darkroom is slightly different, but they all have similarities. The first similarity is that you'll find pretty much the same stuff at every enlarger station. The enlarger itself is this piece here. It has a wooden workstation on the bottom. That's where you're going to print your photos. On top of each workstation is an easel. The easels are double-sided. There's 5x7, two smaller prints, and then an 8x10 on the back. These easels have little doors that open up. Your photo paper slides in the notches, you close the door on top of it, and then your image prints in the opening. This leaves a nice white border around your prints and makes them look more finished. Each enlarger station has a toolbox. Inside the toolbox you'll find all of the same things at every station. You'll find an orange cleaning cloth. This is for cleaning negatives. It is not for cleaning your hands. This orange cleaning cloth should always stay dry. You'll find a brush and maybe a blower. These are used for cleaning your negatives. Sometimes dust or little hairs get on top of your negatives and you can use those to gently clean them without scratching your negatives. You'll find mat board in different sizes. These are for dodging and burning and for printing your test strips. You'll also find a grain enlarger. This is used to help enlarge your photos when you're trying to get the image in focus. You'll also find a timer at every enlarger station. Let's review the two kinds of timers you'll see in the darkroom. The first one is an older style timer that looks like this. There is an on off switch, a time focus switch, and then a knob that controls the time. When you are adjusting the time on your timers, you want to make sure that you are always using the knob in the center to adjust the time and you're not dragging this with your finger around the clock. This front knob right here, this front arm controls seconds. This one right here controls minutes. You will not need to adjust the minute arm, just the second arm. So when you adjust this, let's say to five seconds, my timer is currently off and it's set to time. So if I switch my timer to on, my timer is going to count down the five seconds and then the light of my enlarger is going to turn off when it reaches zero. The buzzer on top here, the notch on top, or the switch on top, is to control the buzzer. So if I turn this on and then set my timer to five seconds, it's on time. As soon as I turn this on, I'm going to let it count down. And you can see it makes kind of a startling noise when it goes off. We leave these switched to off. This is mostly just to remind you that the timer is still on. That buzzer stays on until you turn this switch off. And that's mostly for those of you who are forgetful and kind of forget to turn the timer off before moving on to the next step. This is a newer version of the same timer. You can see it has an on off switch, a time focus switch. This knob down here controls that buzzer. And then again, it has a knob in the center to control the time. So, I would turn this on. Some of these timers have plastic covers over the on-off switch. That's just to make sure that you're not touching the electrical timer with wet hands so you don't get shocked. Some of them require to use a little muscle to push this button in over the plastic casing. So if I set this to time and adjust my timer, I'm going to turn it on and then you can see it's going to count down just like the other timer. Now, if I have this on, and some of you guys will hear this over on one side of the darkroom sometimes, if I turn this to five seconds again and turn it on, when this is turned on, you'll hear the buzzer until you turn the timer off. I like to leave all of these off because it's kind of startling and it's kind of loud. Remember again, you always want to adjust the time by turning the knob and not by grabbing the arm. 
Grabbing the arm to adjust the time can damage the timers, and these are kind of hard to buy. The more, uh, the older they get, the harder they are to buy. As far as the enlarger goes, this is one of our bigger enlargers. It works the same as all of the en other enlargers. The negative carrier is located here. So if you lift up on this little knob and pull out your negative carrier, the negative carrier in this enlarger is circle. Your negative slides inside this little opening and then you close it shut and you place it inside of here. Inside the enlarger here, this is called the bellows, this accordion shaped thing. There is a piece, um, a piece inside of here called the condenser. It's essentially two lenses flipped on, on each other and it focuses the light inside of here. Up inside the housing, this piece right here is called the housing. Up inside of here there is a light bulb. Okay, there's a light bulb inside the housing. The um, knob right here on the right controls the height or the zoom of your image. So if I turn this, it lowers the head of my enlarger. I can also raise it up. The taller the enlarger, the bigger the picture I get. The shorter the enlarger, the smaller the picture I get. Underneath here, there is a small little lens. You can hear it kind of clicking. This is the, the enlarger's aperture. So just like your cameras, the enlargers have an aperture. This controls how bright or dim the light is that projects your negative onto the enlarger, or onto the easel. On the right hand side, there's also a knob. It's labeled focus. You would turn this to adjust the focus of your image. You can see there is another set of bellows here. Um, this controls the focus of your image. So this enlarger right here is kind of um, large compared to the rest of the enlargers in the dark room. Uh, there's also an extra knob on this one. You can't probably see it, but right up here by the housing, there's an extra knob. That is labeled with a piece of tape that says do not touch. That controls something inside of here that you guys aren't going to need to change at all. So just know that that one's labeled do not touch. The focus is down here on the bottom. The zoom is on the right. You've got your timer, your easel, your toolbox, your aperture. This gains access to the negative carrier. Inside here there's a condenser and a light bulb. And this whole piece up here is called the housing. Now I'm going to show you some of the other enlargers that we have in the darkroom. This is the Omega enlarger that we have in the darkroom, and this is probably the most common type of enlarger that we have here in the darkroom. Underneath here is the aperture. Again, it's a little lens in the underside of the enlarger that controls the amount of light that is let into your enlarger. This is the housing. Underneath here, you can see there's a light bulb down inside the bellows there is the condenser again so same kind of thing this little drawer right here is meant to hold filters which we'll talk about kind of when um, you're a little bit more advanced the negative carrier in these enlargers is located right here so to access that you would pull forward on this lever that raises the head of the enlarger you then have access to the negative carrier these two pieces come apart it's pretty common that you guys forget that these come apart and you'll end up dropping one of these pieces on the floor. It's startling, it makes a loud noise, but it's really not a big deal. Okay, so most of these are um, apart in two parts. So on this side of the enlarger, the knob closest to you controls the bellows. This is the focus of your image. And then back here attached to the post, which is this tall piece, there's a triangle shaped knob that you can loosen to raise or lower the head of the enlarger.